Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss an emerging topic that is behavioral finance. Here I am going to give you a quick recollection of what is behavioral finance. And after watching this video, you will get an idea of what is the meaning of behavioral finance and definitely you will get a conceptual understanding of behavioral finance. Behavioral finance is emerging as a new paradigm in the behavioral economics discipline as an alternative to the standard finance in the 1980s. It is a subfield of a wider field called behavioral economics. Before discussing behavioral finance, I would like to communicate about what is a standard finance. We all of us know that finance deals with numerics, that is numbers. We are looking at the financial statements, whether it is balance sheet or profit and loss account. It lacks some human characteristics, which is affected by the biases and personalities. Who is taking the financial decisions in corporates, that is CEO, maybe MD. They are finally human beings, right? So they are affected by the human biases and cognitive errors like the personality, attitude, behavior, etc. First, let me summarize what you have learned in the standard finance or traditional finance or classical finance. By doing a recap of the standard finance theories, we can understand that all of these financial theories are based on certain assumptions. Consider the important theories in finance and from economics, that is EMS, the efficient market theory, CAPM, that is capital asset pricing model, APT arbitrage pricing model and MPT that is market portfolio theory and theories from economics that is expected utility theory and diminishing marginal utility theory, agency theory and bounded rationality theory and YAMA hypothesis that is Mont-Gillard and Miller approach. All these theories have certain assumptions. The most important assumption is that first one man is rational and second one market is perfect. And third one, information asymmetry, that is equal dissemination of information to all. And fourth one, no transaction cost and there is no corporate tax. And in the past several decades, these assumptions have been challenged on the various grounds. And behavioral finance says people have to make decisions under uncertainty. So standard finance says people will evaluate the probabilistic outcomes of various alternatives and select the one which maximizes their utility according to expected utility theory. In other words, they will select or analyze the pros and cons of each alternative and select the best one which is best fit for them. In standard finance or classical finance or traditional finance, people are considered as homo economicus is very rare in our society. Our emotions will play an important role in the decision making in real life. So, behavioral finance involves the application of psychological insight into human behavior for financial decision making. So, behavioral finance studies the effect of emotional, psychological, cognitive and social factors in financial decision making of individual and corporations. So in this video, I am concluding with this statement that behavioral finance involves the application of psychological insights into human behavior. In the next video, I will explain the difference between the standard finance and the behavioral finance. Thank you for watching the video.